Hello and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2. Here we are on a train coming into our Jackson train station, just so you can get a nice first person view of what goes on as a train comes in through here. We can see pulling into the station, all the people waiting, and if we look around, the beautiful view of the city and maybe even a glimpse of the coast as you look out through the station. So in this episode, we're going to further improve our passenger transport by adding a ferry that goes from San Jose to Winston-Salem. I thought about doing it by train, but there's not really any good way to get a good turnaround to link these two lines. If we did something here underground, it'd just end up being too sharp and the trains would have to slow down quite a bit to get around a curve that sharp. Now we could cover it by bus, but that would require us to build another bridge and I'd like to eliminate adding bridges everywhere across the river as that'll really make the river not look so nice. We can have bridges here and there like we have this train bridge and we have a few farther up the river over this way, but I don't want to have the entire river pretty much covered with bridges once we get really late into uh, this save. So I think by boat would probably make the most sense as it wouldn't be too far of a trip. We'd probably have the ferry sit somewhere here maybe, and then over in San Jose we could probably get it to connect to this train station. So that wouldn't be too terrible because that would also give options from people in Downey coming to San Jose then taking the ferry over to Winston-Salem. So that's one thing that we're going to do in this video. Uh, we're pretty much going to go around do a couple of other small things. I think we might detail up this cliffs area as when we did this we removed all the trees but we never put anything back. So. I think we'll come back through, make this area look really nice with some trees, maybe a little bit more finer detailing with the landscaping, and maybe even fix this road as we might try to connect the road all the way up over to our construction material area. And then lastly, I think we're finally going to try to get this goods factory, and more specifically this train, to ship goods all the way over to the cargo hub and I'm still pretty unsure about how we're gonna go about bringing that in exactly as there's a few ways we could do it but I think realistically we'll end up coming across this way near around where our steel mill is and then bridge across and connect up to this uh, cargo hub train station probably from this side. So anyway, let's get right into this by starting here in Winston-Salem. And like I mentioned before, I think we'll fill out this empty space here with the ferry. We will have to do some uh, redefining of the streets just to make it look nice, but let's first see what kind of space that will take up. So it looks like if we get rid of these roads here, we can fit a ferry right about here, right there, without too much issue. Now we'll have to delete a lot of these roads and then tidy up this whole area. But once we do that, I think we can have a nice uh, ferry station here where hopefully people would like to come to. Alright, so then after a short time redoing the streets, I think we have something that's fairly decent and gives us enough room to do a little bit of detailing. So we'll start this over here, and this really isn't going to be much of anything special as the other ferries that we've done before 
had quite decently sized parking lots. That was because those either were the sole uh, way of getting in and out of the city, or because in the case of Jackson and Scottsdale, that's a very large city, so there'd probably be a lot of people parking there. So, however, for this, it's going to be fairly small, where we'll probably just have the parking lot surround this main building, and we'll still give it some access to public transportation, but again, really nothing else too special outside of that. So now that we have this painted, let's get some fences in, and we'll go for these fences here, get those to line up right with the edge of the dock, and then we'll bring it straight out to the road. So there we are on this side, and then over here we'll just outline our paved area, basically just following the road. So we'll bring this fence to right about here. We'll do a little bit of a smaller section right at the curve, so somewhere about here, and then we'll just bring that all the way back over to this side. So that's really all that we're going to do in terms of fences. I don't think we have to worry about making it too secure, but then we can come in, find our parking lots. So here we go, and then we'll just line this up with the right number of spaces. It looks like 20 is pretty much perfect. We'll get one there, flip this around, Get a couple on this side of our uh, ferry building. So we'll place that one right there. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Fill those up with cars and then really that's all there is to it. So this will end up being a very quick project and hopefully in the end we come out with something that we like. All right, so here's our completed uh, passenger harbor in Winston-Salem. You can see the parking lots and the light poles. And really, that's all that we're going to be adding in this area. So we can zoom out here, get a little bit better view. It's really nothing too special. We'll add a bus station or a bus stop. So we might just move this one to right in front of here. And then I think we'll move on to San Jose. So let's delete our bus stops there. We'll grab this. Actually, we need to grab our bus stops. We'll do that. And I think that might have routed correctly. So yeah, that, that looks correct. If we click these lines. So we'll leave it as that, and we'll pretty much leave the city to fill in the rest of this area. Alright, so now over to San Jose. Again, I think we're going to try to squeeze this in over here, or maybe we'll try to even fit it in over here and have it as the same rotation as this train station, so then they can both sort of share a uh, parking lot right between them. So let's see, well let's first line up this with the same rotation as the train station and if we take a look here that looks to be correct so now we just have to bring this out far enough to where it's in the water so about there and we'll come back and landscape this so that the water isn't so shallow but now we should be able to extend a road over to here, or maybe bring one up on the side. That would be something new and interesting. And then we'll fill in this space here with the parking lot. So we'll grab our asset erase eraser and get rid of all these trees so we can see clearly. We'll flatten out the terrain. We'll need to pause so that the city doesn't keep 
building in this area. And now that everything's flat, we can hopefully just sort of extend this street straight out to the end here. And that seems about right. It does curve a tiny bit, but I'd rather keep this bit of the road straight and parallel with uh, this building. And we won't really notice this from a distance. So we'll come through now and find our asphalt tool. We might actually fill this area in with uh, some trees and bushes. And all of this area, this is going to be asphalt. All right, so here's how this lot's going to look like. We do end up with a little bump here, but that's fine. There's nothing we can really do about that. So let's come in here, find our parking spaces yet again, and we'll fill out this whole area now. All right, so this is pretty much what the layout of our parking lot's going to be. We have a good amount of parking, but we didn't want to block any of the areas where the cars will be going around, so we do have enough space for a loop around these uh, this set of parking spots here. And we'll just come in, fill in these spots randomly, add some lights, and then I think we'll be good to get a ferry running between these two cities. Alright, so here's the end result. It looks pretty good. All we have to do is add the trees in over here, put in our collision tile so that the city doesn't just build right over this, and then we should be able to get a boat running. And here we are just showing off the build, the parking lot and train station, and then coming over to the harbor with our trees all the way out to the water here. So lastly, all we have to do is come into our terrain tools and flatten out the area right in front here so that the water is deep enough for boats to come in and out. All right, so now let's find a shipyard nearby. And I think the nearest one is probably, probably the one all the way over at the cargo hub. So we'll come in here, buy some vehicles, and we'll want to think about the kind of passenger boats that we want. So taking a look here, it looks like these Meridium Ferries are probably our best bet as they're the fastest and largest that we can use so far. Well, maybe not the largest, but the fastest. So let's grab three of those and we'll set those up on a line between wherever Winston-Salem is, right here, and then all the way out to San Jose over here. So here comes our new fleet of ships going out to deliver some passengers. It's gonna take them a while to move all the way down the river to get to Winston-Salem, but hopefully that means we can start piling up passengers here before uh, those boats get here. So as for the next part, I did say that we wanted to detail up this area, so let's get into doing that. Now I think the first thing I want to do is delete the road here, and we'll replace this with a much nicer probably paved highway. So we'll have this come out somewhere about here. We'll come here, find a medium country road, and then we'll have that upgrade all the way out to here, where then we can really just grab this and hopefully just try to mirror whatever the train tracks are doing over this way. All right, so here's our road. You can see it follows the train tracks pretty well. And then we give a little bit of space once we get over into this cliff area as it follows the coast a little more. And then coming back this way, we get pretty close and parallel up with the tracks. We did have to bump out a little bit here on the riverside, so 
we'll smooth this all out. And then I think we're good to do some terrain details next. So as for the terrain details, I think what we're going to do is pick the height map uh, texture thing. We'll increase this brush size and lower the strength. And then we'll just click every now and then. I think we maybe just want temperate noise. So yeah, we'll do that. Give it a quick click every here and there. And that'll just help to provide a little bit more detail on the ground where we previously smoothed most of this over. All right, so now you can see here all the shadows that get cast now from our slightly rougher terrain, and this gives a much more realistic feel looking through here. We will quickly come through here and smooth out the coastline since that area would probably be a little more smooth. So we'll just come like this. We'll try not to get it to smooth out the opposite side of the road. But I think that's pretty good then. So now the next thing we're going to do is put in some trees. And I think I'm going to keep it with the two trees that we see here already. So these, what I believe are the redwood trees. Or Scott's pine trees. And I think the other ones are these shingle oaks or maybe European lindens. I think they might be these... Uh, shingle oaks or maybe they're sugar maples so yeah we'll go with the scots pine and sugar maple trees and we'll just place those around to add slightly more detail maybe cover up some of these areas where the cliffside gets a little weird and jagged but we're not going to overdo it as we still want to provide really nice views especially from this uh, set of tracks up here but we do want it to feel natural to some degree. So in order to do this, we'll start out some of it by maybe doing a light brush, really bring the strength down, and just sort of paint some of this to get a little randomness going. Maybe we'll increase that slightly. So we'll do this as there's a little patch of these sugar maples right here. So we'll bring this around the foot of this cliff, keep following, and that might be good for this area. Now for these little pockets here, I think we'll just dot some back along the cliff side, and then really that'll be all that we do in terms of that. We'll leave some of this as open fields, as that will probably look pretty good. And then over here is where we start to get into the Scott's Pine bit. So we might mix them here and here so that you can sort of get an idea that maybe these uh, tree colonies are starting to mix as they're growing from where they originated from. And then pretty much all the way from the foot of this cliff over to where this patch of trees are, we're just going to fill that all in with trees. All right, so now that's this lower level of cliffside done. I want to just add maybe a few trees up here on this second level and then this top level here can pretty much stay how it is since we didn't really touch that to begin with. So it looks like a lot of the ones up here are these Scots Pines. So I'm not sure if we'll really use any other types of trees. But we'll just come through and lightly add in trees on this side of the tracks. Alright so this is what this area looks like all done up now. You can see the trees up here on the second level and all the trees down here that we put at the base of the cliff. That just really helps to make this area look very nice. You can see we didn't really overdo it much up top here. You still get a good view out from here. There's a few patch of trees on this side of the tracks where we have sort of these peninsulas jutting out, but for the most part I'm pretty happy with this area. So. We'll leave it as is and move on to the next thing. So now it's time for the last bit where we're going to bring this goods factory all the way over to the cargo hub. And I think we're going to keep this train line that's currently existing out to Jackson just so that we don't have to have such a large train coming since 
The train coming in here is probably going to also help serve Scottsdale in some respect, so the trains coming in and out of here are already going to be very large. So we'll keep our direct line with goods coming to this station, but we will, somewhere along this line, branch this off and make our way over to the cargo hub. And I think the best way to go about this is to actually start a little bit on this side first, so coming from the cargo hub. And then once we make it across this river, we'll figure out where we're going to branch off and then connect those two ends. Now, over here at the cargo hub, what we're going to want to do is flatten out a good portion of land so that we can have our tracks go straight out. And this will probably result in tunnels through this area. We will flatten out much more over here uh, for future space in case if we want to expand or do something with this area. But I think that's good enough for now. We will find a new open platform, which I think we'll go with this second one here. So we'll bring this straight out far enough so we can get a crossover in here. And we'll get this crossover somewhere back here, right about there. And now we have to think about which way we want to go with this. So I think there's two ways we can go about doing this. We can either slightly curve it underground and then bring a bridge over. And then we basically put another tunnel under this hill. And this is pretty much just blowing straight through. Uh, to get to that line or we could come across this river sort of go around the city of Santa Clarita have another bridge maybe over here or cutting straight across here and then looping back around to go up to the goods factory all the way up by Montgomery now I do think there's a way that we can build a bridge and maybe follow the edge of this hill around so we'll keep it above ground, keep our costs somewhat in check. And then we can sort of bridge across all this, land somewhere on this plateau right about here, have another bridge across, and then meet up somewhere over here. So I think that might be our goal. So we'll start by the cargo hub to do this. We'll continue these tracks straight until they go underground. So then once we're underground, I think we're going to try to start going up. Let's get this to go up at a very light slope. So let's first make sure we're coming out of this aligned the way we want. And I think we'll want to aim somewhere like that. So then we'll follow these tracks over and meet up at the end here just like so. And now we get to the part where we just pretty much drag this across and hope that we land where we want to. So I think having a bridge, something like this, so it comes straight out from here, it's a concrete bridge so we get much wider supports. It doesn't look too terrible. You, you could argue it's somewhat unrealistic, but Really, I don't think there's a better way to cross this without intersecting a ton with these roads and tracks here. So, I think we're going to build this. And then we'll do the same thing here. So, we'll do something like that. And looking down here, you can see our bridge is perfectly straight and flat, which is what we want. And now what we can do is essentially connect up to the side of the hill here, and we can begin to climb. So we're going to bring it around like this, and then we'll need to curve something probably around there. We'll keep going. We'll bring this around this side of the hill. We will want to keep it flat or going up, so we'll have to make this a slightly wider turn. And I think 
pretty much all this we'll try to get as just land. So we'll get all this to fill in there. And we're almost where we want to. I think we're going to follow this cliff edge around this way. And then somewhere around here is when we can bridge over. So now we pretty much have ourselves aligned to... If we look straight out from here, I think we can make it to that plateau all the way over there with a single bridge. And hopefully it's about the same height. So it looks like we have to go down just slightly, but if we can get this to snap straight, we click this so it slowly slopes down. That's not too bad. And I think we might go with the same concrete bridge. So yeah, that's not too terrible. We'll follow along with the second track. And now pretty much all we have to do is turn this corner and I might try a different bridge here just for some variety. I think let's go with this bridge. And then all that's left to do is connect this set of tracks to our existing line. And then we can figure out what kind of train we're going to have. Alright, so now we have these tracks connected up. And I think we're good to figure out a train to run all the way over to the cargo hub. However, first before we do that, I think we're going to come through and upgrade everything to high speed over on this side. And then we're also going to come through and I think we're going to electrify the track as well. Since I think there's a train I have in mind that I want to try out on this line. Alright, so this whole line is now electrified. Let's actually first get signals in. And we'll only place them every now and then, since we'll really only have like two or three trains running on this line. And then once it meets up here, I don't think we have to add any more signals. But we'll just do this. We'll put some back here. And I think we should be good then. So now let's let this play. And... A look at our options. Alright, so this is the train that we're gonna try out. We used this engine here. This is one that we have from the Steam Workshop, the GE VGN EL2B. It does only have a top speed of 50 miles an hour, which is a little unfortunate, but it's very powerful for what it is. If we look at our top speed over here, it can get up to 50 miles an hour on flat and medium slopes in pretty much about a minute for each, and then high slopes, it has a top speed of 46 miles an hour, which we do have a good segment of track here that's at a high slope over by Santa Clarita. So we're only going to run one of these on these lines, so it's very long, which is why we need all of the power we can when it starts going up and down those hills. So let's buy that, set up a new line that runs from here all the way over to our cargo hub here which it recognizes perfectly which is what we want and we will set this to only load goods and at the cargo hub it's going to unload everything it has so then really all we have to do is fix the terrain around some of our tracks and then we might set up one line to carry goods out of here. So here comes this huge train coming out of the train depot. We'll speed this up just a little bit so you can really get a sense of how long this train is. I believe it has a little over 300 capacity so it's probably close to 20-25 cars in length. From a distance, it's not quite as long as I thought it was going to be, but I'm more than happy to make this train much longer if the demand is there. 
So taking a look here at our cargo hub, it looks like this line here, we can start taking some goods to Mesa since Mesa has goods as its second highest uh, resource. So that'll start to generate a good amount of demand to start with. And then later on we can get into maybe moving some of those goods into Santa Clarita and other places probably in the next episode. So let's first manage this train and we're gonna have to pretty much replace the entire vehicle as it's going to be carrying fuel and goods over to Mesa. Alright so now here's our train for our lineup to Mesa. We only have one running so this one's also going to have quite high capacity and if we can find the engine here we're gonna roll with this P PRRQ2468 uh, or 4464 as this one also gets up to speed very quick. It only has a top speed of 55 miles an hour so we'll have to keep an eye on it that's not holding up our other trains that share the rails. Um, so we might have to upgrade the engine if this doesn't work but this powerful engine should be able to work with this train. So if we replace that and then we'll want to select the line yet again and manage it so it now picks up goods from the cargo hub and unloads it all in the city of Mesa. So the next all we have to do is make sure if we find our truck stop. So it looks like this truck stop doesn't cover the goods. So we'll just place a new one over here where it will get all those buildings. So right about here looks like it covers pretty much everything. And then we'll come grab some new trucks. And these trucks will carry the goods into the city. So I think we'll get five of those. We really don't need too much. And those will bring it all the way up to this stop here. So here's that new train coming across here. You can see it's pretty long and it's probably not going to get any goods for a while since I don't think our goods factory, if we find this, I don't think it's supplying that line just yet. So we are going to have to let this run for quite a while before that demand builds up. But now all we need to do to close out this episode is fix some of these areas where the terrain gets a little weird. So we'll pretty much just smooth this out. I don't think we'll make it perfect. We might actually just flatten it so that we extend this out a little bit. But as you can see it's a hill so we're not going to flatten out so it gets a perfect view out but we will just lower it so it doesn't feel like it's caved in. So that works out, we'll smooth out a little bit of this side, and a little bit where the bridge meets. Over here we'll smooth out this area so it wouldn't catch any water as the water runs down the hill. So we'll continue smoothing that out around this way. We'll do the same thing here, we'll increase our brush size just slightly and smooth out this side of the tracks and then I think really that's all that we absolutely have to do in terms of making this look nicer but I think that's pretty much gonna be it for this episode so now if you enjoyed this episode please like and subscribe if you have any suggestions or feedback leave a comment below Thanks for watching, and have a great day.